Herbick, field agronomist with DuPont Pioneer. I'm uh, Matt Laubach, dairy account manager with DuPont Pioneer. And today we're just taking a look at uh, ear development in one of our PKP sets near the St. Cloud, Minnesota area. So we just went out to a PKP um, training session and we pulled some ears from the plot. Um, it was planted May 15th. Um, so we're, when we got out there, we can see that our earliest product, we had an 83-day 83, 83 product um, all the way up to a 99-day uh, grain product. And what you can see here is we've got everything where we're entering blister to products that haven't even um, pollinated. You can see silks that are still attached and just a variety of um, ear development here. So when we look at that, then we can obviously see a difference in maturity, but even among an 85 day to a 99 day, we still have variability within the middle of that maturity group. So Matt, um, what we're seeing here is a difference in silking dates, right? Yes. And so you can see uh, silking and pollination will occur differently even within um, a, a maturity group range. So yep. when we think about that in terms of a stress event, you know, if this cornfield was pollinating and we've got some hybrids that have already pollinated, you can see cell division is occurring versus others that haven't been pollinating yet. And we think about the conditions that we had last week, some really warm nights or some hot temperatures, that will then make a, have a stress impact on some of these hybrids that may have already been pollinated mm -hmm. and affect that cell division period. So when we think about corn silage then, what does that mean for us, Matt, in terms of uh, selecting silage products? When we think of ear development, how does that relate to tonnage? So a lot of times when we look at our silage maturities, we'll look at, we'll see a different maturity based from the grain maturity to the silage maturity. We can see the difference of how they line up here. Across the top here, we put down the silage maturity on all these products here. And when you're looking at this, you're looking at the way that they develop, and you can see that these are a lot farther along than the later ones. <laughs> the thing to remember is 50% of your silage yield comes from the cob here, so we want to make sure we get the maximum development of the cob for silage. Sure. That's going to affect our starch content, right? Yes, it will. The, far, the closer we can get to black layer, the higher the starch percentage should be in the product. So our goal is to make sure that we get to the end of the season where we can get to about half milk line in the ear to maximize starch and maximize the yield, harvest with the proper moisture. So it gets back to what we were talking about earlier, Kelly, is that you know if you're in, let's just say a 95 day corn zone for grain, you could potentially go to a 100 day silage zone on account of the fact that we don't need to get all the way to black layer. We can be at that half milk stage, which is probably somewhere about two to 300 GDUs before the black layer so we can change uh, our products that we're using for it. Yeah, so what was that you were talking about earlier? The ideal scenario would be to have that plant nice and green and healthy, but re reach maturity, right? Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world for silage, we would like to see the, the ear make it to black layer, and then we have a completely green stem stalk and leaves on there to maintain the moisture on it. We would maximize yield at that point, maximize starch, and we'd be harvesting at the right moisture. Right, so we wanna do that, but then also make sure we're getting the most tonnage out of the hybrid maturity group that we select for a given environment too, right? So being on right. that fuller season selection yep. is a good place to be. It is, it is, and, and it gets back to, that's why the silage maturities are kind of based on a couple things, one being the silking date of it, and the other one being the late season plant health too, right. is how well does it hold the moisture at the end. So it gets back to uh, when we're looking at the silage maturity, I think the best thing is if you can bring up that chart that Kelly showed you earlier today, okay, it takes this many days from silking to get the black layer, where you got all these steps as you go through it and you look at the differences here. So from a blister, you're looking at 40 to 50 days or whatever, then late milk, early dent. But for maximum silage yield and where we want to be is we want to finish the season at about full dent or half kernel milk point. That is about approximately two to 300 GDUs before we get the actual black layer. So if you look at, okay, we're at a, whatever, 2,500 GDU market for grain corn, we could actually be looking at a 27 to 2,800 GDU market for silage. Because if you're in a 2,500 GDU market for grain, that generally means you're gonna get to that 2,500 GDUs and finish your corn. We don't need to finish it. We can stop two to 300 GDUs before that if you look on the chart here. So we'll add two to 300 GDUs to that grain market there, and that's the silage market we're gonna target. Because we don't need it to get the black layer. Now, if it makes it the black layer in that situation, that's great, but it doesn't have to. We're gonna maximize, the, the harvest moisture is gonna be ideal, and we're gonna maximize starch deposition at that time. 